Hello everyone, uh, welcome again to one of my new sketch talks. As probably all of you know, the sketch talks, I pick one of the sketches that I make available on my monthly uh, Patreon, uh, the one that uh, all the tiers that have access to images uh, have access to in this case, so it's not one that is limited to, to a certain tier uh with the eight images but it is uh available for the four images the four images with line and the four eight images with line and color um so if you'd like to join an uh, exercise or uh, take a look at the actual sketches that i'm talking about here i have put it on the left where you can see it uh, the final sketch uh, but uh, again, uh, you have access to high resolution versions of uh, the sketches on my Patreon if you join me there. Okay, let's dive into this one. I have picked this one um, and just to uh, jump off uh, to a little sidestep. Um, Every sketch that you see on my Patreon, um, if you would like to uh, have me talk about one of them and explain the process that I use for a certain sketch, uh, please let me know in the Patreon uh, comments and I can take that into account with uh, the next version that I make. So that's just so you know. Okay. Uh, as you see here uh, on the left and on the right, on the left you see the final sketch and on the right uh, you see where i started from and like many of you know or at least you can all see it in the sketches that i have on my instagram uh, sometimes i stay very close to the original and sometimes i take uh, quite a, a, a big uh, leap away from the original and in this case um, that's something that I thought would be fun to do for this one. Um, this is an image again by Yoshi Town, uh, one of the photographers that has graciously allowed me to uh, use the images uh, for a sketching. Um, and you see on the right, it's a very bleak building. It's an abandoned, uh, at least it looks like an abandoned building. Um, but uh, again, I think most of the times during the day, some of these have the shutters down all the time. But this looks like, yeah, quite abandoned, uh, very rusty. So at least uh, it's it's an interesting building, but it's a blocky shape. And um, you see um, lots of repetition. You see it here uh, on the side. Let me take a brush color so that I can do that on the overlay uh, you see lots of repetitions here and here it has basically uh, this arrangement of uh, three uh, and here it's four windows with this uh, brownish uh, tan kind of color um, i thought well this is a nice occasion for uh, a departure from the original and what i first did here was actually uh, sometimes it works or sometimes i like it and sometimes i would like to change it and in this case i'd like to change the perspective so here you see uh, he basically pointed the camera upward and that tilts the building down and you get a a, a three-point perspective on this one where you have a vanishing direction to that side it goes off frame uh, but and you have a vanishing line going that side off frame and in this case you also get a vanishing li vanishing line off frame right here on the top so there's one there one there and one there and that's what they call a uh, three-point perspective and in this case I don't like that dynamic uh, I wanted it to be like a more static uh, perspective uh, with just a simple two-point uh, perspective so only in this direction 
and this direction. Uh, and for the rest, uh, keep it uh, all the verticals like more or less vertical. Uh, I never keep it too straight, um, except where I need to uh, make a sketch uh, on commission basis, where it's a really very smooth and straight architecture. I have to stay more or less straight to that. Um, so that's what I did here first. First, I straightened out the building. And what I also do, you can see that between the start and here the straightened version, I simplify the background. There was not much to do, but here I got rid of all the I got rid of all the uh, electricity lines, telephone lines, or whatever it is, and uh, isolate the building more or less from its background. But you also see like I straightened out the building, um, and that makes it already uh, yeah a, a good basis for um, designing my sketch on uh, and apart from that i wanted to uh, work on this section here and i also knew that i wanted to open up the building so uh, this uh, i wanted to open up and give it an extra facade um, because that way um, yeah, it looks a little bit more uh, uh, still actively lived in and, and not like uh, completely dead. Um, what you also see is uh, some of my favorite attributes here, like uh, these air conditioning units. And to uh, spice up or to make this silhouette a little bit more interesting, uh, because basically what you see here is you have some really 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 simple shapes you have this big block here uh, which is basically like one big block and a smaller block standing next to it and that's the basic shape actually uh, and to make it more interesting uh, this uh, sign uh, on top is interesting. I added some extra like detail to uh, make more visually happening there. You can see that I also uh, add some extras here on the angles, but most of it uh, also on the silhouette here is done like adding this extra like um, advertisement neon sign here and uh, some uh, a sign there i added like this balcony and again uh, like you have come to know uh, my work uh, i don't make these lines straight i make them uh, yeah more or less lively and that is uh, yeah, it looks more interesting that way. And I added some visual interest here. Uh, so I did lots of things to it, but basically like I did uh, enhance and uh, make the silhouette more interesting uh, on top of the block shape, the big block shapes that make up the basis of this uh, building. Let me get rid of the lines and then we can move on. So from then on, I did something extra and you can see that difference uh, here between the, uh, this stage and this stage. Uh, that's also something that I like to do if I want to exaggerate a building. Not only did I uh, make the silhouette more interesting by adding these signs, uh, but I also took that whole second first floor and second floor and enlarged that uh, which yeah makes it even more like interesting uh, an interesting building uh, what i do then usually is to add uh, a darker this area here uh, i add a little darker uh, section to it which 
looks like it's more recessed and there could be something in there there could be a metal structure in there um, that's something that um, would make it more interesting um, and again like I did these air conditioning units here uh, which made that, that section more interesting but the big change that you see here is um the difference in size of these top two floors uh which made it uh, like a, a very interesting shape to uh to sketch uh i look at this i look at uh yeah basically i look at the pixels and see how this takes shape and from there it's yeah i get inspired and say okay i can do this i can do this and uh, I go on until I have something that I feel like, okay, that's like a nice starting point. Uh, you see that I add a couple of air conditioning units. I add some visual interest there that you don't see in this uh, area here. Um, there's some boarding. I use that from another image and I stick it in there uh, just to see how that looks if I add some more um, visual interest there. Um, and uh this is how it finally took shape uh i'll zip back a couple of times to let you see all the differences so you see that these all these facades get a lot more interesting and for me it doesn't matter if uh, if this is really rough uh like i i would do it a little bit more uh worked out in in the final sketch but this is for me just like an indication okay uh, i want to keep the, the the color of that facade i want to keep that more simple so not like all these different colors uh, or even in this one all the stuff there uh i'm going to add in like a window and a balcony and these signs I just indicate them uh, and that's enough for me to know like okay this is my starting point and from that starting point um, I continue that's basically where I grab my sketchbook and that's uh, when I get started on the actual sketch on my Patreon, uh, you see uh, a tier where you get both the line sketch and the color sketch. And uh, there you can see how uh, minimal, basically, uh, I keep my line work. Uh, because the line work for me is just like a framework where I uh, let the color do all the work to tell the story. The lines are, uh, yeah, um, the framework on which all the color work hangs uh, and the combination of the two is what makes uh, my final sketch. Let me pick this one and see if I can make this really big because uh, this is a high resolution scan of my sketch so I can zoom into an incredible level uh, and normally these uh, sketches are quite small they're like 13 centimeters i'm in the netherlands we measure in centimeters uh, it's a uh, 13 centimeters wide by 21 centimeters high if i take my sketchbook i don't know if it's in there uh, let me see it should be in here Here it is. So you can already see uh, the, the lens can distort a little. Uh, I'll hold it next to my head uh, and hopefully that's it's caught in the camera. Uh, you can see it's actually a quite a small uh, book. But uh, when I do a high resolution scan, I can go really, really, really very close up. And you see all these different lines and all the activity of both line work and coloring and um, I'll grab or I'll point out some of the colors because um, I have a lot I have a lot of colors and for me it's quite easy to have the base laid down 
and then think, well, that would be nice to add just a little touch of blue or just a little touch of pink here and there. Um, but those are really not fundamentally necessary. If the base is okay, uh, the rest is just like icing on the cake. Uh, that will always work if you don't overdo it. Um, so I will point out only like the, the, the main colors. And if you look at this color here, that's a Windsor Newton. And yeah, I can hold it up to the camera, but I'll read out the name. It's a yellow 717, so Y717. Um, this one is one of the, yeah, like a very grayish light kind of green, which I use a lot. And usually I always combine it with the khaki, which is the Y616, also from Windsor & Newton. So the two together are these, and you can already see that they have a little value difference. And they are really great for these grayish green kind of tints. What you see in here is that it fades or blends over into another Windsor & Newton, uh, which is also quite light. Uh, it's the pastel blue. And if I look at that, it's a C719, uh, the pastel blue is also a color that uh, works. These colors work really quite well together, as you can see here, because they are still in their saturation they, and in their value, they are quite similar. And since they're not highly saturated, uh, they work really well together. On this side, uh, you see some of these bluish tints um, repeated. Uh, I go darker here, and again, that's a Windsor & Newton. It's a G917. That's a Windsor & Newton. It's a bluish, gray, greenish. So it's a blue-green uh, and gray. So it's not really highly saturated kind of color. And that also works quite well with the other one. I have them in my uh, marker setup. I have these uh, as a trio together. And the darkest one, uh, which is called Verdigree, is a C426. Um, that's the darker. And that's the combinations that you see in this area here. You also see some reddish kind of colors, and these are um, a, a Copic, and that's a Copic E11, which is the lightest. And this lightest color, um, I combine it with the E13, which is slightly darker. Uh, that's the light suntan, and the other one was let me read that because I just uh, usually look at the numbers. Uh, barley beige. And I combine that with a Windsor & Newton, which is coral. And this coral is like, almost like, uh, yeah, a life giver. Uh, in any area where you have like greens or these bluish kind of tints, as soon as you put in that coral, uh, it pops up with life. And uh, you can see that in these areas, and you can see it in a lot of my images, I, I use that coral uh, a lot. And I also use, you see that in this area, uh, something here you see, by the way, and it's uh, the first moleskin book that uh, displays this kind of uh, artifact. The colors somehow like uh, they don't penetrate the fiber or they penetrate the fiber differently. That's something I never uh, really had any trouble with. And in this book, it's on every page. So I hope that it's just a wrong paper batch uh, because I don't like that too much. Uh, but we'll see. I have a couple of them. Uh, so and I have to <laughs> I have to live with it because, uh, uh, yeah. 
I'll keep sketching. And if something doesn't work out, then uh, that's tough luck. But uh, yeah, not really that much of a problem. Uh, we move on. Here, this color you see is a Winsor & Newton again. It's the shale that's a darker purplish kind of color. So we go from the pinks um, to the darker purples. And I go even darker with slate, also a Winsor & Newton, which is a V715. And the shale was an R215. Uh, these colors, yeah, they, they work magic. I've been using these color combinations uh, in a lot of sketches and that has grown organically. Uh, I mean, there was a time when I didn't have any of these colors. So, uh, but uh, once I got to work with them, I, I kept buying just like, uh, especially like the non-saturated colors. And once I started working with them and experimenting with them, these were colors that lie that were like, okay, I really like these and I'll keep them here. And they have like a close by location in my uh, marker trays. Uh, let's see. And that basically is the play. There's here, there's one that uh, pops up now and then. And that is this bluish green, and that will be another like Winsor & Newton color. And it's probably, I don't remember exactly, it's the turquoise uh, C247 from uh, Winsor & Newton, uh, which is like, a, a, and you can already see it, it's a very saturated color, so it really pops out. It's not too dark. Um, and the really darkest dark colors that you see here are usually uh, in my Copic range and they, it will be, I start there with a C7, uh, which is already quite dark. You can almost look at it as like a 70% dark color. And I can even go all the way to C9. I have a C10 as well. And the C9 and the C10 are almost black. Not completely because uh, using a completely black tone will, in many instances, just kill your image. It will be a black hole. And here, even in these dark areas, you can still see there's a lot of light because you can see the line sketch and you can still see all this line play. And if it would, if you would have a black marker, this would all disappear. And that's something that, uh, yeah, will kill the sketch. It will make one big ba black blob. And here you see all the transparency at work. If you overlay colors like here, this is probably like the E11 from Copic, uh, this uh, barley beige. Uh, if you overlay that on this uh, lighter blue, you get all these really nice tints uh, that enrich uh, the sketch and uh, that's something that I really loved about the markers in the first place is all this richness in overlays uh, I when I was in art academy uh, I, I did a lot of watercolor and uh, I am used to how this layering effect uh, can enrich uh, yeah the, the, the thing you're working on and as an almost last thing, I start using the white highlighter and most of you can dream already what that is. It's uh, Uniposca and it's the 0.7 millimeter bullet shaped uh, version. It's a very short but stubby one and it needs work in the sense that uh, it's not like you open it and it works perfectly all the time. It's a love-hate relationship. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it skips, sometimes it's way too milky. Uh, but it's nice to have something that's not really completely predictable uh, because that is also what gives a sketch a character. And you see these white lines applied here. And what I said, it's not the final 
uh, phase of a sketch because after I do that and you can already see that uh, this marker mark uh, it was laid over this white line and I do that all the time because this way you can also see it here like this really long marker trace marker track uh, I push down the white so that it's not completely white and gets more integrated into the sketch itself and it gives it a lot of depth having the, uh, the darker parts and the lighter parts it acts almost like a shadow area and it makes it more alive if you would have only really white um, lines I can fake that a little if you would have all these white lines it would since they all have the same value you don't have any sense of a light and dark side of the building and this starts to really uh, get separated from your sketch uh, the background the colors suggest that this lies in shadow but if you have these white lines over it it just completely jumps at you and it doesn't get integrated so white is the almost final step but the final step is always like touching down uh, the whites and uh, integrating them more uh, in the sketch and I think that's about as much as I uh, want to share with you on this sketch I hope that you enjoyed it uh, please if you like follow me uh, or support me on patreon um, you can always say like okay I would love to see uh, the schedule because what I usually do I'm late uh, this month uh, but what I usually do is uh, at the beginning of the month usually the first or the second I make the new batch of sketches available there and uh, from there I wait for any feedback like uh, oh could you do this one um, and then I can take that into consideration uh, for this uh, sketch talk where I just uh, pick one of these sketches out uh, uh, and you can uh, follow along and maybe if you have the colors or if you want to buy these colors uh, and, and follow along you can uh, do that and you have some extra background information on how I got from the photograph to the final sketch so look forward to seeing you next time and uh, have a great month and see you in July bye bye